Now, some of you might remember that uh, Cheerios had this wonderful ad. It was uh, biracial, which normal people don't take any notice of, but uh, some had uh, some uh, vituperative comments about and were upset about. Uh, and it has started a new controversy because it's going to air again. So first of all, let's show you the ad so you know the context. Hey, Gracie. You know how our family has daddy and mommy? And me. Yeah, that's right. Pretty soon, you're going to have a baby brother. And a puppy. Deal. Now, for us decent Americans, I, I literally would not have even noticed what the issue was. But at the time, there was some vitriol against that ad because the dad was black and the mom was white. Oh my God, how could they do this? So uh, the folks at MSNBC remembered that and they put out a tweet. They said, maybe the right wing will hate it, but everyone else will go, oh, the adorable new Cheerios ad with a biracial family. Okay, given the fear that was that accompanied the last time the ad was introduced, it makes sense, but apparently not the conservatives. They were livid. So here's one sample tweet uh, from organization Conservative Americans. Cheerios, we hope you will be releasing a statement about the MSNBC horrendous remark. It is unacceptable. Okay, oh, here we go again. Looking for an apology from MSNBC. Will they give it to them? Hold. Hold, wait, it's coming, all right. Now first, I gotta remind you what happened last time. Now to be fair, it wasn't the Republican Party or any Tea Party group or anything that objected to the dad. It was just uh, people that were on Facebook and on YouTube, and that happens all the time. But clearly, they weren't left-wingers, they were right-wingers who objected to the ad. In fact, the Huffington Post at the time described it this way. An adorable Cheerios commercial featuring an interracial couple and their daughter generated such a strong racist backlash on YouTube that the comment section had to be closed. They also said, commenters on, on the serial's Facebook page also said they found the commercial disgusting and that it made them want to vomit other hateful commenters expressed shock that a black father uh, would stay with his family. So if that wasn't racist enough, there you have it, okay? Uh, now, look, again, they don't represent the Republican Party, but obviously MSNBC was referring to something. Or whoever put that tweet out was saying, hey, remember when right-wingers were mad about this? Ad? Okay, now maybe you say hey, it's a little unfair to say just blanket say right wingers, but clearly the people who were mad were not progressives or liberals, right? Obviously. Okay, much ado about nothing. Uh, now remember, of course, that they have good reason to think that right wingers in general might also be mad about biracial families. Why? Remember, we just earlier this week did a story about how Fox News and some right wingers were upset that there was an ad that involved an American soldier and his Muslim wife. Wow, how crazy of us to think that right-wingers would be upset about biracial marriages, or in that case, uh, people from two different faiths. If, if you don't remember, here's what Fox News said about it. Now, the company claims that the ad campaign features a real U.S. military veteran and his Muslim wife, or is based on them. Now, when the billboard was unveiled in San Diego, a big military town, there was a lot of anger. There is now a billboard in Times Square just a few miles from Ground Zero. Quoting, have you people lost your minds? Do you even know what soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder go through on a daily basis? All the progress my husband and many other veterans have made will be wasted by the effect seeing this billboard would do to their mental state. And the company is now hoping Megan to put up 20 more billboards across the country, but Florida and Texas have already told the company, no thank you. Florida and Texas won't even allow that. There's nothing more controversial about it other than there is an American soldier and his wife who happens to be Muslim. Oh, right-wingers being upset about two people from different backgrounds being married. <laughs> MSNBC, you sound crazy. You sound unhinged. So obviously they're not going to apologize for this, right? I mean, they've gone around apologizing for everything. The Alex Baldwin thing, the Martin Bashir thing, what, any, the Melissa Harris Perry nonsense about Mitt Romney's grandchild. I mean, they're not going to apologize over this, are they? But of course they are. Here comes the apologies. Quote, earlier this account tweeted an offensive line about the new Cheerios ad 
We deeply regret it. It does not reflect the position of MSNBC. Now, it's MSNBC, so one apology ain't gonna do it, right? You need more, here comes more. We are deleting the earlier offensive tweet. It does not reflect MSNBC's position. <laughs> we apologize, we apologize. <laughs> but that wasn't enough. Two apologies, I mean, come on, at MSNBC, the over-under on apologies is at least three and a half. So here comes Richard Wolf, who runs MSNBC's website, and he says the Cheerios tweet from MSNBC was dumb, offensive, and we've taken it down. That's not who we are at MSNBC. For Christ's sake, stop it already. Stop with the apologies. There was an actual controversy about that ad. That person referred to it. But now, <laughs> oh, we're so sorry, right? Wait, this is supposed to be the progressive network. They're not a progressive network. They're the apologize to the right wing network. I mean, they're like a, at this point, and there's good anchors on there, there's great producers on there, and I feel bad for them. But at this point, they've become a, a caricature of like weeping liberals. We're so sorry, Fox, dude. We're so sorry, Republicans. And now, was all, were all these apologies enough? Of course they weren't enough. Then the head of the RNC comes out, writes Priebus, and says, no, 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 no. This is, quote, toxic programming. Oh my God, it's so toxic to say that right-wingers were upset about that ad when some right-wingers were. So he then issues this threat. This morning I left a message with MSNBC President Phil Griffin to express my displeasure. I've sent him a letter demanding that he personally, as president of the network, take responsibility and apologize for the disgusting tweet until he takes internal corrective action and personally apologizes, not just to the RNC, but to all of right of center Americans. I'm banning all RNC staff from appearing on associating with or booking any RNC surrogates on MSNBC. As an elected official, strategist, or surrogate, I'm asking you to agree to do the same. That's an open-handed slap, boy. Now, what is Phil Griffin gonna do? Now, I mean, if I'm running a network and this guy's gonna try to push me around like this, after all the times you've been pushed around, and then he does this in public and he threatens you, he says, oh yeah, I'm gonna take away your access. Now if you're a real journalist, you wouldn't give a damn about access. You'd be a watchdog of the government, right? Say, oh, the Republican Party doesn't wanna go come on, good. All right, we're gonna come harder after them. The Democratic Party doesn't wanna come on, good. We'll go harder after them, right? Now you're not gonna publicly, cravenly, bow down to this guy, are you? And say, oh, well, of course, I need your access, I need your politicians, we, we're, we're so sad, we can't do a show without uh, you coming on here and telling us what the official Republican propaganda position is. He didn't personally apologize, did he? Of course he did. Just before the show went on air, I got this update. Phil Griffin writes, the tweet last night was outrageous and unacceptable. We immediately acknowledged that it was offensive and wrong, apologized and deleted it. We have dismissed the person responsible for the tweet. Oh my God. Not only did he get on his hands and knees, but he fired the poor person who made a perfectly logical tweet. <laughs> Don't you understand what they're doing to you? They're trying to make you look like you're weak and sad and pathetic, and you're helping them do it over the most minor irrelevant things in the world. They didn't say the Republican Party uh, is not gonna like this ad. That's not what the tweet said. They didn't say Rice Priebus isn't gonna like it. They didn't say RSC wasn't gonna like it. They didn't say any Republican politician wasn't gonna like it. They made a general reference to some people who had already said they don't like the ad. Griffin, as if that wasn't enough, here we go to apology number five. I personally apologize to Mr. Priebus and to everyone offended. At MSNBC, we believe in passionate, strong debate about the issues, and we invite voices from all sides to participate. That will never change. You don't believe in strong, passionate debate. You believe in making a comment and then running for the hills the minute you see opposition. This is so sad. This is one of the saddest things I've ever seen, man. It's, it's so embarrassing that it's not even fun anymore. I mean, we were having fun with the Melissa Harris Paris story because it was much ado about nothing and they blew it out of proportion. This is just now pathetic. In fact, we have tape of uh, the head of MSNBC, Phil Griffin, 
this is the message that he sent to Reince Priebus afterwards to make sure that he realized he was sorry. <laughs> Was that enough? Was that enough? Well, uh, then the RNC apparently put out a statement, just to rub it in a little bit more. Quote, we appreciate Mr. Griffin's admission that their comment was demeaning and disgusting, and the chairman accepted his apology. Oh, that hurts. Oh. Oh man, if I was on MSNBC at this point, I would be monumentally embarrassed. Congratulations, the chairman has accepted your apology.